Hey guys, it's Eric from maperformance.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to correctly install an FRS, FT86, and BRZ oil cooler on your FA20 powered Scion, Subaru, or Toyota. In just a few hours, you'll be able to install this oil cooler with tools found in most backyard mechanics toolboxes. The MA Performance FRS BRZ oil cooler kit comes with everything you need right out of the box, so let's get started. First things first, make sure the engine is cool so you don't burn yourself on either the oil or the exhaust components. Since we'll be working under the car in some instances, you run the risk of touching hot engine parts. Wait at least 15 minutes after running the car to be safe. Once it's cooled, lift the front end of the car. We have a lift here at the shop, so we use that. Next, we're going to remove the front bumper. There are a total of 18 body clips and 7 10mm bolts holding the bumper to the car. Start with the body clips located within the wheel wells. There should be 4 on each side for a total of 8. Next, remove the 8 clips under the bumper, facing the ground. Then, pop the hood and remove the two clips up top. Really helps having a body clip removal tool and prying gently under the clip and slowly unscrewing. Whatever method works best for you is okay. Set these aside in a tray or cup so you don't lose them. Remove the turn signals from the bumper and set them aside. Push back the bulb harness as they will interfere with the removal of the bumper. You'll notice another body clip behind each of the turn signals. Remove these. Once you have the clips out and sitting aside, begin removing the 10mm bolts. There are two bolts under the bumper facing the ground, and five bolts under the hood. The bumper should be free now, so carefully remove it. Slowly pull it away from the car, checking for clearance issues. Once it's all free, set it aside. With the bumper off, you can see the core support, crash bar, lower air dam, and some under paneling. We don't need to touch the core support or crash bar on this turbocharged FRS, but we're going to need to remove the air dam and under panel. There are six body clips attaching the air dam to the under panel as well as three 10mm bolts which attach to the car. Once you have the under paneling off, you'll find three more 10mm bolts on the air dam. Remove these and the dam will come off. Set it aside as we will attach the oil cooler to this. With the air dam off, mark the center of the panel with a marker or scribe. Use a tape measure to find the center of the cooler and mark it. Visually line up the two marks you've made along the front edge of the panel. Then put a mark where the cooler mounting tab holes are to be drilled. Set the cooler aside and drill the four quarter inch holes. Now that you have the holes drilled out, use the supplied hardware to fasten the oil cooler to the air dam. Using a bolt and washer, insert through the panel. Find a spacer and set it on the bolt. Then place the cooler on the panel. Fasten the oil cooler with another supplied washer and bolt on. Repeat for the remaining holes. Use a 10 millimeter box and wrench and ratchet to tighten the hardware in place. With the cooler in place, you may begin attaching the stainless steel braided hose to the FA20 oil cooler. These will be pre-assembled and cut so you won't have to worry about trimming those up. When you tighten the hose fittings, make sure you run the hoses facing to the left, driver's side of the vehicle, as the hoses will run up through the engine bay behind the headlight. Reinstall the air dam with the oil cooler attached, carefully running the hoses through into the engine bay. With the air dam and under paneling back on the car, with the FRS BRZ oil cooler kit installed and ready to go, Lower the vehicle so you can remove the oil filter to install the thermostatically controlled sandwich plate. The car should be cool, so the filter should be drained of most oil. Remove the filter and either set it aside or discard it if you plan on changing the oil. Start by cleaning the mating surface of the oil filter housing to remove any contaminants that would prevent a good seal. Assemble your sandwich plate by screwing on the adapter fittings. Put oil on the gaskets of the spacer and sandwich plate to allow for a good seal, and place the spacer on the filter housing. Place the sandwich plate on top of the spacer, gasket side down. Attach the plate and spacer to the filter housing, using the supplied feed tube. It is 1 and 1 16th inch, or 27 millimeters. A thin walled socket is best for tightening it down. Attach your hoses and tighten them down. No need to put too much force into them, they will seal just fine. Reinstall the front bumper and attach the press and zip tie. For turbocharged applications in vehicles using a larger oil pan, fill the capacity. Start the car and allow it to warm up to operating temperature to ensure that oil is flowing through the system, including the cooler. Fill it until it reaches the full mark on the dipstick tube. Repeat until the dipstick reads slightly over full when the engine is cold. Total capacity should be around 9 quarts on cars utilizing the MA Performance large capacity oil pan, or around 7.5 quarts on cars with a stock FA20 oil pan. Check for leaks. If all is good, you have nothing to worry about. That wraps up the install of this FRS, FT86, and BRZ oil cooler. Feel free to contact us with any questions you might have regarding this install. Thanks for watching and keep an eye out on our channel for more videos and on the maperformance.com tech site for written installs similar to this.